The following program originates live with the NBC Television Network. World Series. From Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California, the Minnesota Twins meeting the Los Angeles Dodgers. Los Angeles, California, and the fourth game of the 1965 World Series. In appreciation for your continued support, Chrysler Corporation and the Gillette Safety Razor Company bring you this World Series and such other outstanding events as the All-Star Baseball Game, NCAA College Football, and the 1965 Rose Bowl Game, exclusively on NBC. Hi again, everybody. Well, as far as Dodger fans are concerned, order has been restored here in Los Angeles after the Twins had won the first two games of the World Series. Because yesterday, in one of the finer pitching efforts in the World Series, Claude Osteen, for the Dodgers, defeated the Twins by a score of four to nothing. And today, we're going to have a pairing of the opening game pitchers, a battle of right-handers. The pitchers will be Don Drysdale for the Dodgers and Jim Mudcat Grant for the Twins. And to set the stage for us now, from the Dodger point of view, the voice of the Los Angeles Dodgers, Vin Scully. Vin? Thank you, Ray, and hi, everybody. I think the feeling of optimism on both sides, the Twins feel that they now have two pitchers who have already beaten the Dodgers, namely their pitcher today, Jim Mudcat Grant, along with Jim Cott for tomorrow. The Dodgers feel that you might beat Drysdale and Koufax once around, but not twice in the same week, and so both ball clubs are highly optimistic. One of them will be wrong. For the Dodgers, they have suffered one blow. Second baseman Jim Lefevre suffered a severely bruised heel in scoring yesterday. Lefevre will give way to Dick Krasuski. That will be the one drastic change in the starting lineup. Talking about the starting lineup, let's get back to Ray Scott. Right then, we tell you now, this game is authorized under television rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience. And any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as by charging admission for its showing, is similarly prohibited unless authorized in writing by the commissioner. Number 41, Dodger. Dodger Stadium will again see a sellout crowd. Yesterday's crowd, an all-time record for attending a game in this beautiful ballpark in Los Angeles. So for those of you who might well be visiting Dodger Stadium for the first time here are the dimensions 330 feet down the left field line to the foul pole 380 just to the right of the bullpen a park that is symmetrical in every respect 410 feet to deep left center and being symmetrical the distances then are the same in deep right center, 380 feet. And to the foul pole in right, 330 feet. The weatherman has given us uh, a day just about like yesterday. There is a haze. The lights have not as yet been turned on here at Dodger Stadium. They were turned on before the start of yesterday's game. Then in the middle innings, the sun uh, burned away much of the haze. Jim Grant is starting for the Twins today, and a short while ago, we asked him how he'll pitch against the Dodgers today. This is going to be a different ball club today because they're in their own home ballpark. But I intend to pitch about the same game I pitched over there, trying to keep them all off the bases and not walk anybody. Uh, I hope to have some success. Grant, the winner over the Dodgers in the opening game of the series by a score of 8-2. to two. His mound opponent for today's game, Don Drysdale, a loser on opening day, 
Whereas Grant was a 21 game winner during the regular season, Drysdale won 23 and lost 12 and posted an outstanding earned run average of 2.78. Drysdale, by uh, his own admission, had difficulties in putting the ball where he wanted to put it in the first game, and it had something to do with his downfall as he was hit hard by the Twins. The starting lineup for the Twins at shortstop, Joel Oversayes. In left field, Sandy Valdespino. The right fielder, Tony Oliva. The cleanup batter and third baseman, Harmon Killebrew. Jimmy Hall will be in center field today. Don Mincer will play at first base. And starting today's game, despite a very uh, painful injury yesterday, is Earl Batty. In the eighth spot, the second baseman, Frank Pulisey, and as we told you, the pitcher will be Jim Mudcat Grant. The fourth game of the 1965 World Series is being brought to you from Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California. The umpires for this fourth game of the World Series at home plate will be the National League's Ed Sudol. The American League's Bob Stewart at first, Ed Vargo of the National League at second, Ed Hurley of the American League at third, and on the foul lines, the National League's Tony Benson and the American League's John Flaherty. And now to give us the lineup for the Dodgers for this fourth game, here again, Vin Scully. Thank you, Ray. Walter Alston going out to home plate right now to join a discussion with Maury Wills and Sam Mealy, and it must be about ground rules. So while they are chatting, we'll check the lineup. Maury Wills, the captain, leading off at shortstop. Jim Gilliam at third base, hitting second. And Willie Davis in center field. Ron Fairley hits clean up against right-hand pitching. He's in right field. Lou Johnson in left field. Wes Parker at first base. Johnny Roseboro hitting seventh behind the plate. And Dick Krasuski at second base for the injured Jim Lefevre. Krasuski played in all four games of the 1963 World Series against the Yankees. He sparkled with the glove. He did not do much hitting. He batted 154. Lefevre, who is sidelined today and probably tomorrow, was hitting 400 when he was hurt. And Don Drysdale, the pitcher. Sam Mealy, who is smiling but anxious, still awaiting news about the arrival of his fifth child, his wife in Quincy, Massachusetts, waiting. Crowd filing in. Yesterday, we had an all-time attendance crowd here at Dodger Stadium of 55,934, and we certainly will have something like that today. It does not appear to be too much of a serious discussion by any means. As you can see, Alston just kind of gazing over to where Drysdale is warming up. And Wills and Mealy engaged in a conversation. Oh, by the way, remember if you were watching yesterday that you saw Sam Mealy and Walter Alston in a discussion behind home plate. And what Walter was telling Sam Mealy was that we have x-ray machines in the clubhouse. And if anything happens, as it did to Batty, why well, we should have an x-ray right here at the park. Now. The color guard from the United States Naval and Marine Reserve Training Station. And our national anthem will be sung by John Race, star of stage and screen and one of Southern California's outstanding college athletes. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Sung by John Race.
A quick recap, the first game, Minnesota beating the Dodgers 8-2, Jim Grant the winner and Don Drysdale the loser. In the second game of the series, 5-1 Minnesota, Jim Cott the winner, Sandy Koufax the loser. In the third game of the series, 4-0 Dodgers, Claude Osteen the winner, Camilo Pasquale the loser. The first ball being thrown out by the president of the University of Southern California, Dr. Norman Topper, and the ball caught by his famous baseball coach, Rod Dado. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the... The lights have been turned on here at Dodger Stadium. So the conditions are just about the same as yesterday, except it is a bit brighter at this hour than at the comparable hour of yesterday's game. You remember about the fifth inning or sixth inning of yesterday's game, the outfielders had to come in and ask for sunglasses. Today, the veteran outfielder will take the field wearing sunglasses. That's Willie Davis, Maury Wells, and Jim Gilliam adjusting sunglasses too. Dick Krasuski, number 44, dropped into a starting berth because of the injury yesterday to Jim Lefevre. It is doubtful whether Lefevre will be able to play tomorrow. That's Ron Fairley squinting up into the glare, and the outfielders and infielders will have a brighter sky at the start of the game than yesterday. Walter Alston talking to Dick Krasuski, and that's his pitching coach, number 36, Lefty Phillips. Number 28 is Wes Parker. Number 18, the third base coach, Preston Gomez. There's the captain grouping his forces behind him, and the Dodgers take the field. the Dodgers defensively, Wes Parker at first. Dick Krasuski at second. Maury Wills at short. Jim Gilliam at third. Lou Johnson in left. Willie Davis in center. Ron Fairley in right. Johnny Roseboro going all the way in the series back of the plate. And Don Drysdale on the mound. 23 and 12 during the regular season. Jim Lemon coaching at first. And Billy Martin coaching at third. Johnny Roseboro had some ideas about Drysdale's pitching. Here's what he said before the game. Well, the last time out, if you notice, Drysdale's control was bad and he wasn't throwing good. So today, if his velocity is good and the ball is down, I think that uh, possibly he'll have a, a better ball game. And uh, one way to find out, if he throws the ball above the waist more than three or four times in any given inning, he's not on. And uh, watch his curveball. If his curveball is sharp and fast, then we're going to be all right. Well, we'll find out about that right now. As Zorro Versailles, Sandy Valdespino, and Tony Oliva will open up the first inning of the fourth game of the World Series. Versailles, the standout player in the series, without any doubt. He is 5 for 13, four runs batted in, including a three-run home run, and he has sparkled. Strike. Drysdale is a low ball pitcher, and he was pitching high in Minnesota. Right. <laughs> oh, and two to Zoyla Versailles, leading off. One and two. Versailles hit a three-run home run against Drysdale in the third inning of the first game. Drysdale also struck him out twice, but the home run was the big blow. High 
fly foul. Out of play. One and two, the leadoff man drill over Sias. High fly ball to left field. It's playable. Lou Johnson. One away. Interesting to note that Drysdale, in making his pitches to the Sias, did not throw a curveball. They were all fastballs. And that last fastball was up. Here's Sandy Valdespino. He had a double against Drysdale in the first game, appeared as a pinch hitter yesterday, and popped out. He's one for five in the series. Gilliam up even with the bag at third. Parker is back at first. Right. There's Gilliam anchored at the bag. 0-1. Oh 1-1. And one. One and one. Hasn't thrown a breaking ball yet. <laughs> Val Despino is the greatest gum chewer in the world. Shane Joe hit down the line. Base hit. Johnson over to get it. And Valdespino heading for two. The throw. He got it. <laughs> Drysdale did not make a good pitch, but watch the good throw. Valdespino heading for two. The throw. Sandy claiming he had avoided the tag. And now we have our first real argument of the day. The manager, Sam Neely, is out there appealing with second base umpire Ed Vargo on the call. Drysdale, in changing up on Val Despino, got the ball up. And immediately after the out, Roseboro went out to the mound, and I'm sure he was reminding Drysdale to get it down. Here's Tony Oliva. So it's a single, and Valdez Vino is out at second from Lou Johnson to Dick Krasuski. Oliva, two for 12 in the series. Fastball. Valdez Vino ran up as if to bunt before he hit the changeup for the base hit. Tony wants the rosin bag from Harmon Killebrew. Two out, first inning, no score. Two to Tony Oliva. Fouled away. Interesting thing about Oliva, he is what you would call a free swinger. As you notice, he's fouled off all three. And normally, free swingers have a habit of striking out. But Oliva is not a strikeout man by the figures. He makes contact most of the time. In almost 600 at bats this year, he struck out only 64 times. 0-2. Oh Five. One and two to Tony Oliva. Two out, first inning, no score. The 
now have some blue skies overhead, so it is clearing up quickly. Jammed in. Little foul off third. Gilliam is there. He's got it. No runs to hit. Nobody left. At the end of half an inning, Minnesota nothing and the Dodgers coming out. Set Minnesota defensively now. At first, Don Mincher. At second, Frank Quillacy, along with shortstop Rolo Versailles. At third, Harmon Killebrew. Sandy Valdespino in left. Jimmy Hall in center. Tony Oliva in right. Earl Batty behind the plate. And on the mound, the Mudcats, Jim Grant, 21 and 7 during the regular season. It's a strong game to beat the Dodgers in the first game of the series, 8 to 2. Wills, Gilliam, and Willie Davis, the way the Dodgers stack up. Strike. Wills is 4 for 13 in the series. Killebrew up in on the grass. Mincher up inside the bag. Fouled away. 0 and 2. So Grant quickly ahead of leadoff man Wills. 0 and 2. Breaking ball high, one and two. Breaking ball outside. So two fast balls and two curves in the count two and two. Fastball fouled away. Despite the fact there are two strikes on Wills, the Twins still play the corners out, Killebrew and Mincher. Fouled off third, out of play. Jim Grant, who showed the Dodgers great control and got out in front and threw strikes the rest of the way in the first game. Hopper wide at first to Minshew. He goes over the head of the pitcher. There's a collision with Quillacy, and Wills and Quillacy went down. Maury is safe at first base. Minshew appeared to be confused as he tried, I think, to throw to Quillacy. But Grant was already at the bag, and the throw went over Mudcap's head. And then Wills and Quillacy collided at the bag. Here it is again. Boom. Fortunately, they are both all right. It'll be a base hit for Wills. Jim Gilliam is two for 13 in the series. When Wills is aboard, in order to get that ball up to the plate as quickly as possible, Gilliam sees a lot of fastballs. Mincher holding Wills. Ball one. So the Dodgers get a break in the bottom of the first. Gilliam checks with Preston Gomez. Mincher holding Will. Little top fly into shallow left field. Valdespino is there. One away. Here's Willie Davis.
Willie in the series is two for 12. He had one of those hits yesterday, a single. First inning, one out, no score, Wills at first. Killebrew up inside the bag at third. Strike. Oh, and one to Willie. Outfield fanned out about straight away. Wills goes. Pitch is high. The throw down. He's in there. For Murray Wills, his second stolen base. Let's take another look at it. So Wills at second, one out in the first inning. Willie Davis trying to pick him out. Right side of the infield deep. Now Willie around to bunt. Takes a strike. Sometimes the Dodgers will work a play whereby Willie will fake a bunt to draw the third baseman in. And if the third baseman comes in, then Will sneaks in the back door. Versailles to the bag. Ground ball to Mincher, back of the bag. He has to hurry. He's safe. I would think that pitcher Jim Grant takes the blame on that play. On any ball hit to the right side, the pitcher has to get off that rubber in a hurry, and Grant just was too late. So the Mudcats in trouble. Runners at first and third with one out on infield singles on a stolen base, and Ron Fairley the batter. Wills at third, Willie Davis at first. Fairley hit the home run against Jim Grant in the first game of the series. Ron is four for 12. Good fastball. On one. There's Willie Davis at first and Wills at third. Wills never tries to steal home, so Grant can forget about that possibility. Ground ball down to Killisley. He goes to the side. Back to first. Not in time. The run is over. And credit that run to Willie Davis. Because Willie got down to second to tie up Versailles so much that Doyle throw to first base did not have anything on it. And it's one to nothing Dodgers. So the speed paid off in this instance to break up the double play. And here's Lou Johnson. Parker on deck. Dodgers one, twins nothing, first inning. Fastball, little pop fly, Quillacy on the grass. He's got it. For the Dodgers, a run on two hits, they leave a man at the end of one. The Dodgers won, the twins nothing. Sandy Valdespino tried to take the extra base on the single to left. It's part of the Twins' plan, says Coach Billy Martin. Well, I think uh, if we get a chance today in this Dodger ballpark with the uh, deep uh, part that they have here and the arms of the opposition aren't as strong as in some of the ball clubs in the American League, when we get the opportunity, we're certainly going to run on them. We're going to take that little extra base if we can. 
Armin Killebrew takes the first Drysdale curveball of the day low. One ball and no strikes. Armin, three for nine. Run batted in. The curveball was down and away, and then he gave him the fastball up around the letters. One and one. You get a fastball to Killebrew between the knees and the belt buckle, forget it. Ball two. Drysdale gave up a single in the first inning on a changeup to Val Despino. Jammed him again, letter high fastball, two and two. Harmon, of course, was out seven weeks with a dislocated elbow. He still hit 25 home runs. Ball three. Fielder Jimmy Hall, good running speed. He's one for three in the series. Jimmy wearing the protective ear covering on the right side. in the series came in the fifth inning against left-hander Jim Brewer. Jimmy having a look at Billy Martin signs. On deck, Don Mincher. They are not holding Killebrew. Parker directly back of the runner. Over. One and one. Dodgers lead one to nothing here in the second inning. Billy Martin perhaps hanging out a sign. Playing hall to pull. Sinker. One and two. Drysdale wants to check with Roseboro. One and two, the count. left-handed in first baseman who homered against Drysdale. He's three for ten in the series. Dodgers play him to full. Infield swung around to first. Outfield shaded around to right. Parker directly back to Killebrew, not holding him on. Half swing for a strike. The count to Don Mincher, one out, Chillaboo at first base, one to nothing Dodgers, second inning.
behind him, and he fouled it back to the wire. One and two. I think that should bring back a few memories, that one pitch to Sal Magley, who was finishing up his career when Drysdale just came up to the Dodgers. And Sal was trying to teach the young Don Drysdale how to throw a little curve to jam the left-hand batters. And that's just what he gave Mincher. One and two. Two and two. Two and two. Filed away. In case you join us a little late, the Dodgers on two infield singles, a stolen base, and a force play picked up a run in the first inning. And the big play in the first inning was Willie Davis' speed, enabling, to, enabling him to tie up Zello Versailles. Got him. Two out, and here is Earl Batty, and we are delighted to know that Earl is able to play. He scared everybody in town yesterday. Earl is in pain, and his neck is stiff and sore. And as you said before the ball game, I'm going as far as I can. He's a Los Angeles boy, and Ray Scott has an interesting story or anecdote concerning Earl Batty. Earl's mother uh, was not able to watch yesterday's game, in fact, not able to listen to it because of her uh, religion, and as a result was spared the ordeal of seeing her son, uh, well, at the moment it looked like he might have been grievously hurt, fortunately not serious. Fastball for a strike, 0 and 1. Two out, second inning, 1 to nothing Dodgers. Earl Batty is 2 for 11 in the series, 2 RBIs. He singled a right to drive in a couple against Drysdale. Breaking ball high. I don't believe Drysdale has thrown a curveball for a strike. And of the curveballs he has thrown so far, only one was low to Killebrew. All the breaking balls to Minshew were up. Fastball over. So he seems to be able to put the fastball just where he wants to, and he's having some difficulty with his breaking ball. One and two. In there, breaking ball. Down he goes. No runs, no hits. The man left. Score at the end of an inning and a half. The Dodgers won. The Twins nothing. Bottom of the second inning, one to nothing Dodgers. The Dodgers will have Wes Parker, Johnny Roseboro, and Dick Krasuski. Wes Parker is three for seven in the series. Killebrew has to play off. He has good running speed. He's going to bunt. Drags it by a diving glance. Will it be play too late? So the Dodgers have three hits, all infield hits. You know, baseball in like fishing, you don't throw those little ones back. Johnny Roseboro is three for 11. Parker stole 13 bases during the regular season. There's a bunt foul, and they're gonna really concentrate on the alleys of first and third. Roseboro normally does not bunt. Like any veteran catcher, he's slowed up, and consequently the Dodgers play hit and run with him a great deal. They're doing it now. There goes Parker, and it's off Batty's glove, and Parker is on his way to third. 
He's in there. So the Dodgers were playing hit and run, and the pitch was very high and off Earl Batty's glove. We'll see how they rule it. Pass ball, wild pitch, probably a stolen base as well, and that's it. Stolen base and a wild pitch. There's West to second, and keeps on going. The Twins play their infield out. Down ball to Quillacy, right to his way. lead two to nothing and that will be an error charge to Frank Quillacy Dick Krasuski gets into this World Series and here's how he feels about it well it's always a real pleasure to play in the World Series uh, it's a little tough to come off the bench like I did yesterday and uh, today I, I think it's going to be a little a little better for me because I'm going to start the ball game and uh, I'm, uh, it's always a great pleasure to play in a World Series and uh, I did it before in 1963 coming off the bench and uh, I think I could do it again uh, here in 1965. So the foul bunch to Don Minshew for one out, Johnny Roseboro holding his first and Don Drysdale coming out. On the error charge to Frank Quillacy with the infield up, there is no run batted in credited to Roseboro. On that bat in the first game, went 0 for 1. So Jim Grant behind 2 to nothing here in the second inning. Fouled away. 0 oh, and 2. Roseboro at first does not present too much of a problem as far as stealing is concerned. They'll watch him anyway, but John stole only one base this year. 0 oh, and 2. Ball one. Drysdale really gets up on the plate and up towards the mound. You look where his left foot is when he gets back in the box. One and two. There goes Roseboro. Curve is strike three and they hang him out easily. So the double play, two to six. For the Dodgers, a run on one hit and an error. Nobody left, and at the end, of two innings of play. Dodgers, two, twins, nothing. The Dodgers finished out the second inning playing hit and run with Don Drysdale at the plate and Johnny Roseboro at first base. The only time they'd turn Roseboro loose on the base pad, but it didn't work out as Earl Batty fired a strike to Zorlo Versailles. So the Dodgers in two innings have stolen two bases. They played hit and run twice. One was on a wild pitch that sent Parker to third. And they have a couple of bunch singles. Frank Quillacy, whose error allowed the run to come over, will lead it off. Frank is two for nine. Followed by pitcher Jim Grant. And then leadoff man Joel Oversias. Dodgers two, twins nothing in the third. Gilliam about even with the bag at third. Ball one. You notice the defense on Quillacy, Gilliam up in the outfield, fairly shallow. Fly ball into shallow left center, Willie is there. And was fighting the glare. Almost lost that ball. 
when he went down into a crouch, he was trying to find a dark spot as a backdrop for the ball. This 1965 World Series game is being brought to you live and in color exclusively on NBC. One problem about Dodger Stadium that sets it apart from all other ballparks and consequently gives the players some trouble is its actual design. Strike to Jim Grant. Most parks you have a lower deck and maybe a mezzanine and an upper deck and that's that. But if you stand out in center field here and look in, you see almost a deck of cards. There's six levels. Oh and two. Starting with the dugout seats behind home. Then you have the lower grandstand. Then the mezzanine. Then the club level. And then two more decks up above that. Oh and two. Got him. Drysdale has now struck out four out of the last five. Here's Doyle Versailles. Slide to left field in the first inning. Third inning, Dodgers two, Twins nothing. Ball two. Two and oh. Fouled away down the line, well out of play. Two and one. If you're playing center field at Dodger Stadium, that's what you look at. A lot of levels and a lot of people and a lot of colors. Tough to find the ball. Hit to the left of Will. Base hit to center field. Relay recovered by Drysdale. Zoilo holding on. And Sandy Valdespino will be coming up. For Zoilo Versalis, his sixth hit. So Versailles at first base has more hits than anyone else in the series up to here. Here's Sandy Valdespino. Two for six. Single to left in the first inning. Ball one. One and all. Jim Lemon and Zoilo Versailles, perhaps appealing to Bob Stewart about Drysdale's move. Drive to center field. Willie Davis is there. He's got it. No runs to hit a man left at the end of two and a half innings. The Dodgers two, the Twins nothing. Well, just prior to today's game, and here's what he said. Well, we feel that uh, we're uh, in a good position again. Uh, we felt that the third game was uh, was probably the most important game for us. Uh, we won that. Now we have Don Drysdale and Sandy Koufax coming back for the next two. And we feel that we have an edge, believe it or not, even though we're behind. I don't think that uh, they'll see the same Drysdale today that they saw uh, in uh, the opening game, and they'll see a different Koufax also. So, so we are real optimistic. Base hit for Will, bouncing one over the drawn-in Harmon Killebrew. So the Dodgers now have four hits. Not one of the four hits has reached the outfield, and they will 
takes him gracefully. Here's Gillian. Will stole second base in the first inning. Ball one. Morey revving up the motors. Dodgers two, twins nothing, bottom of the third in the fourth game of the World Series. A little high, ball two. Grant is not quite as sharp as he was opening day. He's been behind several times. He goes. Swung on and missed. The throw down. They get him. The tag made by Frank Quillacy on a perfect throw by Earl Batty. And Grant did a good job of holding him on as well. The wheels is shot down from Earl Batty to Frank Quillacy. Now we'll take another look. Two and one the count to Jim Gilliam. One out. Gilliam flied to left field in the first inning. He has two hits and 14 at bat. High foul off third. Killebrew coming over to the Dodger dugout. He's got it. Two outs. And Grant cut loose with a good fastball that time and almost sawed the bat off Gilliam's hand. Here's Willie Davis. Willie had the infield single in the first inning, but even more important was his speed going from first to second to break up what looked like a perfect double play ball. He was able to tie up Versailles and Zoilo's throw to Mincher did not have anything on it, and the run came over. Ball hit right to Mincher. He'll do it himself. And the Dodgers, no runs, a hit, nobody left. At the end of three, Dodgers two, twins nothing. We pause for station identification. This is the CBC Television Network. A reminder, tonight at 10, 9 Central Time, it's the wackiest ship in the Army to the rescue of a woman in distress. Watch this wonderfully wacky comic adventure tonight, following Bonanza on NBC. So far in three innings, there have been several big plays. Will, outlegging a roller in the first inning on the collision with Frank Quillacy. Willie Davis, beating Jim Grant to the bag for a base hit on a ground ball to Mincher. And then Willie Davis tying up Versailles at second base to allow a run to come over. And in the second inning, the single, a bunt single by Parker, and on a hit and run play, a wild pitch that sent Parker to third, he scored on Quillacy's error. And the Dodgers lead two to nothing in the fourth. Tony Oliva, Armin Killebrew, and Jimmy Hall will try to get them back. Oliva is two for 13. He forgot his helmet. So they'll bring a hard hat to him. Fouled away. Oh, and one. Big Jim Lemon handling that one. Bob Stewart, the first base umpire, throws it out. Fourth inning, the Dodgers two runs, four hits, and no errors. The Twins no runs, two hits, and one error. Drysdale has struck out four. Grant has struck out one. 
It was Drysdale. One and one. Oliva asking Ed Sudol to examine the ball. Big crowd, very quiet. One and one. Ball two. Drysdale on two breaking balls, very high and way outside. American League batting champ fouled away. Two and two. He got the fastball up and in that time. Drysdale, during the regular season, started 42 games and completed 20. Fastball, a comebacker to Parker. Drysdale, a good fielding pitcher, despite the fact he fell down in Minnesota. Here's Harmon Killebrew, three for nine in the series, walked in the second inning. Breaking ball. I tell you, he got it in a dangerous spot, and Harm really let out. Oh, and two. One two to Harmon Killebrew. One out in the fourth inning. Base is empty. Dodgers two. Twins nothing. A mile drive in the left field. Johnson go back. Away back. Goodbye. So Harmon Killebrew drills one deep into the left field seat. It went out beyond the 380 marker. And for Drysdale, he could eat his glove for only one reason. Every member of the pitching fraternity hates to give up a hit, particularly a home run, when the count was 0 and 2. And the score is 2 to 1. Dodgers. Here's Jimmy Hall. Change hit to the left of Will. He's at the bag. Throws him out. So the changeup got Jimmy Hall two out. Drysdale led the Dodgers pitching staff and in the unenviable department of home runs allowed. Don gave up 30 home runs during the regular season. And in the series, he has now allowed three. Here's the fellow who hit the first of the three, Don Mincher. He struck out in the second inning. Change up, hit off the end of the bat to Gilliam. The throw to Parker, that does it. One run on one hit. Nobody left at the end of three and a half innings. Dodgers two, Twins one. Ron Fairley batted against Jim Grant in Minnesota. Here's what Ron had to say. Well, Jim Grant has uh, has a pretty good fastball, and uh, he does have good command uh, of this particular pitch. He, he's not going to fool you too much with his breaking stuff, although I understand he has developed a little bit better curveball, but uh, he's basically a fastball pitcher. Uh, as far as the ball that I, I, I got very fortunate to hit a home run against uh, Jim, but uh, he gave me a good pitch. I don't think he necessarily wanted to, uh, wanted to make that particular pitch, but uh, fortunately, I, I got around on it pretty good, and uh, it is a kind of a small ballpark and fortunately I got the ball up in the air enough and it got over the fence. One ball and no strikes to Ron. Bottom of the fourth inning, Dodgers two, Twins one. Don Drysdale and Jim Grant. High with a fastball, ball two. 
Jim Grant, 21 game winner, trying to win his second in the World Series. High pop up, back of first is Mincher in foul ground. One away. Lou Johnson has already figured prominently in the game when he threw out Sandy Valdespino trying to go to second in the first inning. As the battery popped up, 0 for 1. He had a perfect day yesterday, two doubles, a walk, and a sacrifice. Right, good fastball. Breaking ball, hit in the air to right field. Oliva's there. Two out. Grant now starting to throw strikes and appear more like the pitcher who started the series. Wes Parker had a drag bun single in the second inning on a hit and run play that turned out to be a wild pitch. He went to third and scored a run. A drive to deep right field. Back goes the leader. Away back to the wall. She's gone. Parker has shown the big crowd two ways to do it. A drag bun single and then a home run. It's three to one Dodgers. Here's Johnny Roseboro, 4 one. Parker hit eight home runs during the regular season. It appeared that he got a ball up and in a little bit and hit it out. And the twins start to move around. Line drive backhanded by Mincher. Nice play by Don. So the Dodgers get a run on a hit. And at the end of four innings of play, Dodgers three, Twins one. Next Sunday, NBC will present three regional American Football League games. The Buffalo Bills will face the Kansas City Chiefs. The San Diego Chargers will meet the Boston Patriots. The Denver Broncos and the Houston Oilers meet at Denver. That's AFL Football Live, mostly in color and exclusively on NBC. Check your local listings for the game and time in your city. Jim Grant is due up third in the fifth inning with the Dodgers leading three to one. Strike to Earl Batty, who struck out in the second inning. In the Minnesota bullpen, Dave Boswell begins to loosen up. Breaking ball over, strike two. Now he went 0 2 on Killebrew and Harmon hit it out. There's Boswell. Oh and two. Fastball got him looking. So Batty, I think, figured there's no way he's going to try and throw a strike after what Killebrew did. And for Drysdale, his fifth strikeout. Of course, that's what the pitchers always say. People always remember the home run that's hit 0-2. They always forget how many hitters you strike out on three pitches. Paid attendance today, 14 less than yesterday. 55,920. 55,920. Breaking ball to the backstop, the quality. One ball and no strike. Jim Grant out on deck. Three runs, five hits for the Dodgers. One run, three hits, one error for the Twins. Fastball hit to Krasuski. Two outs. For Krasuski, that's his first chance of the day. And now here's Jim Grant. Good hitting pitcher. Went down on strikes in the third inning. Jim went one for three in the first game of the series. He doubled against Jim Brewer. 
breaking ball. Big roundhouse curve. Fastball, strike two. 0 oh and 2, the count to Jim Grant. Fastball hit to Sasuski. They go out in order and the score at the end of four and a half innings of play. Dodgers three, Twins one. The second half of today's World Series game is brought to you by the Gillette Safety Razor Company. Bottom of the fifth inning, Dodgers three, Twins one. For more play-by-play, -play, here's the voice of the Minnesota Twins, Ray Scott. Thank you, Vin Scully, and hi again, everybody. Dick Trzuski, the Dodgers' second baseman, starts it off in the fifth. He'll be followed by the pitcher, Don Drysdale, and the shortstop and leadoff batter, Mari Wills. Jim Grant has allowed five hits. Trzuski, strike one, fouled out to Mincher his first time up. Playing today at second base because of a foot injury to Jimmy Lefevre. Breaking ball low, one and one. The teams have matched homers, Killebrew for the Twins and Wes Parker for the Dodgers. High, ball two, two and one. But chinks in the Twins' inner defense have contributed to two of the three Dodger runs. Second baseman Frank Quillacy, one away. Don Drysdale struck out in the second inning. The runner on first going with the pitch as the Dodgers went to the hit and run, but Drysdale went down swinging and Batty cut down Roseboro, the runner at second. Strike. Grant starting him off with the curve. Fastball low, one and one. Barring a change in thinking by the rival managers, it looks like Tomorrow's fifth game, we'll see a matching again of the left-handers. There's a strike to Drysdale. Sandy Kopax and Jim Cott. A reminder, tomorrow's game at 3.45 Eastern Daylight Time. Into the seat. A Dodger victory today will, of course, make certain that the teams will travel again to Minnesota. Two and two. I don't think the pitch was as close as some of the fans believe. Just missing low, and it's three and two. The Dodgers scored single runs in the first, second, and fourth. The Twins' only run on Killebrew's home run at the top of the fourth. And so it's three to one, the Dodgers. Strikeout. So Drysdale, a strikeout victim twice. Two down in the fifth inning with none on, and here's Mari Wills. This 1965 World Series game being brought to you live and in color, exclusively on NBC. Wills today, two for two. Both of them infield hits and scored the first Dodger run in the first inning. In fact, of the five Dodger hits, only Parker's homer left the infield. Killebrew is in tight at third, Mincher up at first. High inside breaking ball, ball one. The 
Quinn's infield defense against Mari Wills. Ball two. Grant has issued no walks in this game and walked only one in the series opener. Right, two and one. Ball three, three and one. The lights no longer on here at Dodger Stadium. Short to first. Grant works the one, two, three inning. And so at the end of the fifth inning, the score is the Dodgers three, the Twins one. Five inning totals in this fourth game of the 1965 World Series for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Three runs, five hits, and no errors. For the Minnesota Twins, one run, three hits, and one error. The one error cost the Twins a run. It's the top of the batting order for Minnesota in the sixth inning. The shortstop, Versailles. The left fielder, Valdespino. And the right fielder, Oliva. Versailles today, one for two, a single in the third inning. He has collected six hits in 15 at-bats in the series. Gilliam and Parker at third and first respectively play Versailles tight. Right. Drysdale has walked only one today, Killebrew in the second inning. And a far different pitcher than we saw in the first game of the World Series. Foul back, strike two. Gilliam and Parker have retreated now with a no ball two strike count. Will. Out. Great play. Take a look at that one again. One down in the twin sixth inning, and here's Valdespino. Single to left in the first and was out, trying to stretch it into a double. And slide out to center in the third. Three to one, the Dodgers lead here in the sixth inning. Ball one. We asked Sandy before today's game how he figured Drysdale would pitch to him. Well, I think uh, the way he pitched me the, the, last, the last game in Minnesota, I think he's going to try to pitch me inside because that's the way that they think that they're going to get me out, so I'm going to be ready for the inside pitch. A strike, and it's one and one. Sandy hit a changeup for his base hit to left in the first inning. Sandy's only about oh, five, six and a fraction, but to the best of my knowledge, wears a size 42 coat. He has powerful shoulders and arms. Labored long in the minors before he got his shot in the big league. That pitch was in the dirt. Six strikeout for Drysdale. Seven in a row retired by the big Dodger right-hander and with two out and none on in the sixth inning, here is Tony Oliva. The Dodgers have limited the American League batting champion to two hits in 14 at-bats.
strike one. Oliva hits with power to all fields. And he'll hit an off speed pitch just about as well as anyone in the game. Strike one. One and one. back one and two now the Spino singled for the first hit off Drysdale back in the first inning Versailles singled in the third for his first hit and then Killebrew homered in the fourth and Killebrew represents the twins last base runner there's the Dodger defense against Oliva Just missing below the knees, two and two. This one is hit deep to right. It is a home run, and it's three to two. Oliva homered 17 times in the regular season. And so the long ball represents the Twins' attack today, and it's a three to two game. And a look again at that home run that got into the seats near the 380 mark in right center. Killebrew walked in the second and homered to left in the fourth. A change curve in for a strike. Fastball low, one and one. Manager Walter Alston, just in case, is getting his ace lefty, Ron Peronofsky, ready in the bullpen. Earlier, the Twins had activity by young right-hander Dave Boswell. Fouled back. Ball one, strike two. Ron Peronofsky in the Dodger bullpen beyond the left field fence. Too happy with the call. The Twins are out and score a run. And so at the end of five and a half innings, the score is the Dodgers three, the Twins two. Saturday, NBC will telecast one of the top college football games of the year when Texas meets Arkansas at four Eastern time, three Central time, live and in color exclusively on NBC. And remember that before each college football game is the Bud Wilkinson NCAA preview show. Ball one to the Dodger leadoff batter in the sixth inning, Jim Gilliam. Slide to left, fouled out the third. Three to two, the Dodgers lead. Fouled away. Gilliam to be followed by Davis and Fairley. Ball on the inside corner. One and two. As we mentioned earlier, tomorrow's pitcher is the left handers. Outside of Gilliam, two and two. Sandy Koufax and Jim Cox. Fastball fouled back. 
Twins have switched in the bullpen to Bill Fleiss and Alan Worthington. Into the seat. Grant, well, there's the Twins bullpen, the right-hander Worthington, the left-hander Fleiss. Grant went the distance in the opener of the series in defeating the Dodgers 8-2. Just below the knees. Full count. First walk by Grant today, and only his second in two games in the series. This brings Willie Davis to the plate, an infield single and a ground out. Gilliam, in the regular season, stole eight bases. Twins have Killebrew in tight. Foul back, strike one. Dodger center fielder. Three hits, 14 at bats in the series. Gilliam leads at first. Fastball high, one and one. Two strike one. Willie has had a look down at third base coach Preston Gomez. Base hit to right. They'll leave a strong arm, but not in time. Runners second and third. a single and here's Gilliam as he headed to third on a re-look at it and on the throw Davis moved to second and manager Sam Mealy is taking the long walk to the mound Ron Fairley the left-handed batting Dodger right fielder is waiting to bat but a change will be made right now. As the Dodgers, leading three to two, have a big threat off going for them with runners at second and third. And third base coach Preston Gomez wants to talk with Willie Davis as Sam Mealy talks with his catcher, Batty, his pitcher, Grant, and the shortstop, Versailles. Now, left-hander Bill Fleiss and right-hander Alan Worthington were both warming up. And despite the presence of the left-handed batter, it is Al Worthington, the right-hander, who is getting the call. It'll be his first appearance in this World Series. Worthington, a vital member of the Twins pitching staff, in the regular season, won 10 and lost 7 pitching in relief and credited with 14 saves. He worked 80 and a third innings and allowed only 57 hits. Appeared in 62 games and posted an excellent 2.14 earned run average. So Grant goes 5 innings plus. Allows 6 hits struck out two, and walked only one. But the walk to Gilliam started off the Dodgers here in the sixth inning.
Worthington throws a natural slider. He doesn't have a fastball in the true sense of the word. His fastball is a slider. He has an excellent curve. Al, a veteran, has been around. First came up to the big leagues in 1953 with the then New York Giants. And in the big leagues has been with San Francisco. He's been with the Red Sox. He's been with the White Sox. Cincinnati. And came to the Twins in the middle of the 1964 season. He was with the 54 Giant Ball Club that beat the Indians in the World Series. And he comes in here in a real pressure spot with the Dodgers leading 3 to 2. And you'll note how the Twins will play the infield with runners at second and third and no outs. Fairly hit into a force out on which a run scored in the first and foul out in the fourth. Foul on the left side, strike one. Worthington had some arm trouble near the end of the season, but I talked with Allen just before today's game and he told me his arm felt fine and he was ready when called upon. At third base, Gilliam. At second base, Davis. No outs. Base hit. One run in. Davis to the plate. The throw cut off for the runner at second. And it is five to two. Twice in this inning now, throws from twin outfielders have either not been cut off or were too high to be cut off. Barely has his second and third RBIs of the day, his third and fourth of the series, and he is at second, and still nobody out. And the batter is Lou Johnson, 0 for 2. Inside, ball one. Fairly credited with a single and moved to second on the throw from the outfield. Inside, ball two. Versailles made a valiant effort to flag down that hard hit ball by Fairly, but with the infield drawn in, it was by the twin shortstop. Step off by Worthington. One of the real certainties of baseball in a situation like that, the crowd will call balk. Ball three inside. In the bullpen, the right-hander is Dave Boswell, and the left-hander is Bill Flight. Strike and it's three and one. On second base, fairly. Five to two, the Dodgers. Last of the six. No outs. <laughs> Worthington. Late at first base. Runner coming to the plate. Johnson in a rundown. Tagged out by Quillacy. But again, the Twins have a defensive lap. As Willisy was very late in taking Worthington's throw. And when the ball was dropped by Quillacy, you watch this on the instant replay now. The bunt is to Worthington. The runner goes to third. Worthington has to hesitate. The ball drops. Here comes the runner to the plate. Fairly scores. It is six to two. One out.
Wes Parker with an infield hit and a home run to his credit. Johnson, I believe, was credited with a single. Fouled back and an error was charged, presumably, to Worthington. Yes. Inasmuch as his throw was not held by Quillisley and the error was charged to the man making the throw. And then Johnson wound up being tagged out by Quillisley. High. Ball three. I beg your pardon. Ball one and strike two. Six to two, the Dodgers. Worthington gets a strikeout, two down. Dodger catcher John Roseboro hit listen to at bats today. A base runner one time on an error. Ball one low. Low ball two. Two out and three runs in in the sixth inning. Roseboro on first, and here is Trzuski. He is fouled out and grounded out. Outside, ball one. Worthington likes to sidearm and the right-handed batters. And he throws a lot of strikes to right-handed batters on the inside corner. Trzuski went too far and it's one and one. Roseboro leading at first. Outside, ball two, two and one. Gilliam to lead off the inning. Worthington, in relief, has walked Roseboro. Shallow center, Jimmy Hall. And the Dodgers are out, scoring three runs on three hits. There was a twin error and one Dodger left. And so, at the end of the sixth inning, the score is the Dodgers' six. And the twins, too. We pause now for station identification. This is the CBC Television Network. In the twins' seventh inning, Jimmy Hall, Don Mincher, and Earl Batty are scheduled to face Drysdale with the Dodgers leading 6-2. to two. 
Jimmy Hall faced Drysdale on opening day in addition to today's game, and here's what he had to say about the way Drysdale has pitched to him. Well, I think uh, Don Drysdale pitched me exactly the way I thought he would, uh, even in spring training. Uh, he moved the ball around. Uh, he has a good breaking ball. Uh, looked like he was trying to get the uh, ball away from me, and uh, every once in a while I'll come in and try to jam me. Call today, call out on strikes, and grounded out short to first. In the series overall, one hit, five at bats. Just 14 fewer people here today than yesterday, when the all-time record for Dodger Stadium was set. Today's announced paid attendance, 55,920. The Twins, oddly enough, have hit one more home run in today's game than they hit all season in nine appearances against the Angels. The Twins runs today, home runs by Killebrew in the fourth and Oliva in the sixth. Plate umpire Ed Sudol looking over to the... Ah, the third base bag is loose. Ed Hurley of the American League is the third base umpire. It has been abused today by the Dodgers. Jim Cott and Sandy Koufax are the scheduled pitchers for tomorrow's game. Six inning totals, the Dodgers. Six runs, eight hits, no errors. And the Twins, two runs, four hits, and two errors today. Plus, several mental lapses that do not show up in the statistics. Dodger infield up at first and third. Foul back, strike one. Paul has worn that flap on the helmet since being hit by a pitch several years ago. In on the fifth, and the pitch is fouled back for strike two. The Twins have not managed more than one hit in any inning. Seven strikeouts for Drysdale and only one walk. Strikeout. One down in the Twins' seventh inning, and here is Mincher. Called out on strikes in the second and grounded out third to first in the fourth inning. Mincher homered off Drysdale in the opening game of the series. Six to two lead for the Dodgers here in the seventh. Low ball one. Delivery inside, ball two. Ball three. Drysdale a bit upset. Dodger outfield well around to the right. Three and one. The outfield alignment. Foul away. 
The lights were turned on at the start of today's game, but then were turned off along about the third inning when the sun broke through. Full count to Mincher. Nine strikeouts. With two out and none on in the twin seventh inning, Earl Batty comes to the plate twice, twice a strikeout victim. And a reminder that tomorrow's game will be sent your way at 3.45 Eastern Daylight Time. Ball one. The last four outs. Strikeout by Drysdale. Right fielder, Ron Fairley. One, two, three inning. And so at the middle of the seventh inning, the score is the Dodgers six and the Twins two. The huge strong has rallied to the charge cry. The traditional seventh inning stretch still being enjoyed by the folks here as Don Drysdale comes to the plate. Drysdale twice a strikeout victim. Earl Batty hasn't come out yet and Rich Rollins has been warming up Al Worthington. In 1963 when the Dodgers swept the Yankees in Drysdale's brilliant one nothing effort here in Dodger Stadium he struck out nine Yankees. And he has already matched that total against the Twins today. And Jerry Zimmerman is going to replace Earl Batty. Zimmerman came into yesterday's game as a replacement for Batty when Batty was injured. Jerry caught with the National League champion Cincinnati Reds in 1961. Drysdale, Wills, and Gilliam are the scheduled batters here in the Dodger 7. Ball one. Worthington has given up two hits and has issued a walk. Drysdale is left with a very small fragment of the bat. There it is. There's something just a little bit ludicrous about a man the size of Drysdale with a piece of bat that small. So a new piece of lumber. Ball one, strike one. Eight Dodger hits off Jim Grant and Alan Worthington. The Twins have managed but four. One and two. Strike three. So Drysdale has been a strikeout victim three times. Second strikeout for Worthington and with one out in the Dodger seventh, here's Mari Wills. Two hits, three at bats, scored a run. Six hits in the series and 16 trips. Will Height and Miller in the Dodger bullpen. Will Height the left three. Twins have used this type of infield defense against Wills in the series. Strike. Worthington is scheduled to be the 
second batter in the Twins' eighth inning, and so manager Sam Neely has ordered action in the Twins' bullpen. Hard to imagine a man stealing that money basis. Versailles, two down in the Dodger seven. A fair ball catch. Here's Jim Gilliam. He's been on base one time today, walked in the sixth inning and scored. That walk to Gilliam by the twin starter, Jim Grant, started the Dodgers on their way to a three-run inning and changed a three-to-two ball game into a six-to-two contest. Foul at first. Gilliam's on with two down in the seventh, and here's Willie Davis. Two hits, three at bats today, four hits in the series. So Gilliam nicked by a low inside delivery, and there'll be a runner for Gilliam, John Kennedy. <laughs> Gilliam heads to the dugout. John Kennedy, many times in the regular season, a late inning replacement for Gilliam when the Dodgers have the lead as they do today. Mincher, unassisted. The Dodgers are out and leave one on. So at the end of the seventh inning, the score is the Dodgers six, the Twins two. John Kennedy goes to third base for the Dodgers. And the Twins, down 6-2 to two here in the eighth inning, will have Quillacy, a pinch hitter, and Versailles. Quillacy today, hitless in two at bat. He is flied out to center and grounded out second to first. Dodger infield up at first and third. Ball two. The twin runs today, home runs by Killebrew and Oliva. Strike two and one.
shallow center, and the shortstop Wills calling. One away. Joe Nostic, right-handed batting outfielder and sometimes third baseman, will bat for Worthington. Nasik has been up seven times in the series and has two hits. Into right center field, base hit. A one out single to center. And the batter is for Sayu. One for three today, six for 16 in the series. Hit number five off the Dodger right-hander. Dodger six, Twins two. This is the start of the eighth inning. Nasik at first leading. Safe, but close. He almost had him leaning the wrong way. Earlier in the game, the Twins complained about Drysdale's move to first. Not too serious about that one. defensive play and take a look at this again what reflexes not a chance for the double up and with two down the batter is Valdespino a single and three trips I don't know about you but I put a circle around that one on my scorecard foul back the inside pitch for strike one Kennedy to the mound. A ball, one and one. Conceivably, the Twins would have had runners at second and third with only one out except for that brilliant play by Kennedy. Parker not holding with Versailles with the Twins down by four runs. Ball two, two and one. Drysdale's only walk today was back in the second inning. A pass to Killebrew. Two and two. Foul. 
Two outs. Versailles on first. Ball two, strike two to Valdespino. Top of the eighth. The Dodgers are leading six to two. Trying to get this World Series even at two games apiece. Foul. Another foul back. I'm not sure, but I think Joe Garagiola might have had a chance to test his skills once again as a receiver on that one. 2-2 to Valdespino. the center field, Willie Davis. Twins are out. Leave one man on. And so, at the end of seven and a half innings, the score is the Dodgers six and the Twins two. A new pitcher for the Twins as the Dodgers come up in the eighth inning. Left-hander Bill Fleiss. P-L-E-I-S makes his first appearance in the series. During the regular season, Fleiss won four, lost four, was credited with two saves. In 51 and a third innings, allowed 49 hits. His earned run average, an even three. So it is Jim Grant going five innings, Al Worthington, two, and now Fleiss. Scheduled for the Dodgers, Fairley, Johnson, and Parker. Six to two, Los Angeles leading. And for the fifth game of the series, just as today matched the opening game pitchers, Jim Grant and Don Drysdale, so tomorrow it will be Sandy Kopak and Jim Cott. <laughs> Jerry Zimmerman, the Twins catcher, replaced Earl Batty. This 1965 World Series game being brought to you live and in color exclusively on NBC. Fairly one for three today. He has knocked in three runs, four in the series. Came up with the big hit in the sixth inning with Dodger runners at second and third. Singled into center to knock in two runs. Ball one, high and inside. Into shallow right, Oliva coming on. One down in the Dodger eighth inning. Here's Lou Johnson, one for three today. Four hits in the series. Looking to the Twins' ninth inning, Oliva, Killebrew, and Hall. Right. Foul back out of play, strike two. A Dodger victory today means that the two teams will journey to Minnesota for the sixth and, if need be, seventh game of the series. It'll be a day off for travel on Tuesday. Two strikes on Lou Johnson. One out, none on Dodger eighth inning, and a six to two lead for Los Angeles. Deep to left. 
home run. You see him applauding? Then, then you watch Blue during the regular season. Is he uh, as exuberant about everything? It's wonderful because he is anything but blasé. He applauds himself on a home run, and somebody said, why in the world do you do that? And he said, when I hit a home run, I'm my biggest fan. <laughs> There it is on the instant replay, and it was really stroke, a line drive homer. The batter now is Parker, infield single and a homer in three trips. So it is seven to two. One and one. Nine hits for the Dodgers today. The flight. Some inches, two down. And now catcher John Roseboro. A base runner twice today on an error in the second and a walk in the sixth. hit in the series. So the Dodger catcher is on for the third time today. Second baseman now, Dick Krasuski, hitless in three at-bats today. Replaced Jim Lefevre yesterday and was 0 for 2 in that game. Ten Dodger hits. Six of the Dodger hits today have not left the infield. But with the Dodgers, there's nothing extraordinary about that. Strike two. Roseboro at first. Two out. Two strike count on Krasuski. <laughs> Valdespino in left. The Dodgers are out and score a run on Lou Johnson's homer. So, at the end of the eighth inning, it's the Dodgers seven, the Twins two. The Dodgers just three outs away from evening the series of two games apiece. Would you say that he's pretty happy? The gentleman with the slightly receding hairline to the left of the young fan was Harry the Hat Walker hatless today. Harry, the manager of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Tony Oliva, a homer in three trips. Foul to left. High 
high, one and one. Drysdale has struck out nine, has walked only one, and has given up the five hits. Second baseman, Trzuski, to Parker. One away in the Twins' ninth inning. Drysdale trying to run his World Series pitching record to three and one. Killebrew today has walked, homered, and was called out on strikes. Ball one outside. Foul back one and one. And inside ball two, two and one. Harmon Killebrew has asked uh, plate umpire Ed Sudol something. And apparently it has to do with the baseball. Hey! He finds it to his liking. Ball two and strike one. Three and one. Ball four. With one away in the ninth inning, Killebrew walk. The only two. Uh, Passes off the big right-hander have been to Killebrew, and here is Jimmy Hall. Hitless in three at-bats, and twice a strikeout victim. In the series, one for six. Ball one. Dodgers not paying any attention, of course, to Killebrew with the score seven to two. Right, one and one. back one and two Drysdale taking something off that pitch all grounded out in the fourth inning on a on an off speed delivery fastball high two two out for Drysdale. So Hall strikes out for the third time and with two outs, and Killebrew on first, the batter is Mincher. Hitless in three trips, struck out twice. Near the stand, 
He could not quite hold it. First baseman Wes Parker. Strike one to Mincher. The Dodgers today scored in the first, second, and fourth inning single runs that broke the game open with a three-run sixth inning and added one in the eighth. The Twins, meanwhile, have managed to score on homers by Killebrew in the fourth and Oliva in the sixth. In the dirt, one and one. Drysdale and the Dodgers just one out away from reducing this to a best two out of three series. Outside and it's ball two strike one. Foul back. Two two. You can just sense that this crowd is ready to explode. 55,920. Not many things would please a pitcher more, particularly in a World Series setting, than to end the game with a strikeout. Three and two. And so with two down, Killebrew, the runner on first, will be going. win it by a score of seven to two. Seven runs, ten hits, no errors the Dodgers, two runs, five hits, and two errors the Twins. In a moment, we'll review the highlights of the game for you. With Pat Hernan and Jack Stroud following on most NBC stations. To summarize the second game of the 1965 World Series, here again is Ben Scully. Well, to sum it up quickly, the Dodgers had six hits that never left the infield and two hits that left the outfield, home runs by Parker and Johnson. They also capitalized on two Minnesota errors and one big play with runners at second and third in a tight ball game. Sam Mealy brought in right-hander Alan Worthington, and he pitched to the left-hand hitting Ron Fairley, who singled and broke the game open. This game authorized under television rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience and any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the commissioner is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as by charging admission for its showing, is similarly prohibited unless authorized in writing by the commissioner. So Drysdale won it, Grant lost it, they're even, and tomorrow it'll be Koufax and Todd. Tune in tomorrow at 3.45 Eastern Daylight Time for the fifth game of this 1965 World Series when your host, as today, again will be Gillette, the people who know men best, and Chrysler Corporation, famous for quality engineering. Today's host, Dodge.
This is the CBC Television Network.